Good afternoon, Westminster Woods on Julington Creek. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon Vesper service on this holiday weekend. Yesterday was July the 4th. I pray that you all enjoyed a beautiful day, maybe had some picnic food and watched some fireworks, maybe on TV, listened to some patriotic music and uh, was thankful for this weekend. We continue with the theme of uh, the 4th of July today on this Sunday as we're still in this holiday weekend and I pray that as we gather together this afternoon from wherever you are that you will find a blessing in this service. Our scripture this afternoon comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It will be chapter 11 and it will be verses 16 through 19 and then 25 through 30. If you would like to have your favorite Bible handy so you can read along with me when we reach that point in the service. We will have two patriotic hymns this afternoon. My Country Tis of Thee will be the first one. I'll share three verses of that one. And then the closing hymn will be O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. And so for both of those, I, I pray that you will enjoy them. And so let us now center our hearts and minds on worship. Pray with me, if you would. Like an oasis in the desert, worship satisfies our sin-besieged souls. Today, Lord, help us find the good in this life by delighting in your presence and help us find the hope you have placed in our innermost selves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In our call to worship this afternoon, I invite you to ha respond with me. There will be a refrain. It's, we come to you. So that's those are the words that you all will uh, share back with me. We come to you. Come to me, Jesus invites. We come to you. Come to me if you are tired. We come to you to you. Come to me if you carry burdens. We come to you. Come and discover rest for your souls. We come to you. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. That first hymn that I was telling you about, My Country Tis of Thee, will be our first one. <clears throat> The first verse you probably know, so I invite you, wherever you are, to sing along with me. The verses 3 and 4 might not be as familiar, but as you know them, sing along with me. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees, sweet freedom song. Let mortal tongues awake, let all that breathe partake, let rocks their silence break, the sound prolong. Our Father's God to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. Join me next, if you would, in our prayers of the people. I will share a prayer and then offer a moment of silence so each of you can take that time to lift up additional prayers. We will close our prayer time of the service 
by praying the Lord's Prayer out loud together. When we get to the part of the silence, feel free to pause this video so that you can take all the time that you feel you need in order to lift up those prayers. Pray with me now. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord for the privilege of prayer. Let us find our voice as we lift up our prayers. Lift up your prayers, good people, for those who are burdened by cancer, Alzheimer's, depression, and loneliness. Lift up your prayers for those who are afflicted with poverty, war, injustice, and the pain of loss. Lift up your prayers for those who labor to tell the gospel in all the world. Lift up your prayers for those who are in leadership in churches. Lift up your prayers for the women, men, and children in your lives. Lift up your prayers for the deepest desires of your hearts. Lord, we know that you hear each prayer as if it were the only prayer and the most important prayer. We offer a moment or two of, of silence so that we may continue to lift up the prayers that are on our hearts this afternoon. And Lord, may we now continue in this spirit of prayer by praying the prayer you taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our assurance of pardon today. Hear these words. In the adventure of life we have found you, O God. By your power and grace you have found us. Share with me. As we proclaim your mighty deeds, as we proclaim your mighty deeds, we celebrate your justice we celebrate your justice. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading, if you have that with you today, again is from Matthew chapter 11, and it's verses 16 through 19, and then also verses 25 through 30. So hear these words from the Holy Scriptures. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to be by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. May God add his blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of his holy word. 
When you think of the 4th of July, what comes to your mind? What, what words come to mind? Maybe things like food, fireworks, fun, fellowship. Maybe the flag with its stripes and stars. Maybe freedom. And if freedom isn't the first word that you think of, I'm willing to bet that it's one that is right up there with some of those other words. Though I am rusty on my American history, I'm sad to say, I do know that there was an immense amount of effort on the part of so many people, people we may not even know about, in order for this country to take its first steps toward being a free country, a place that was united and that we can be with one another. And that's not been an easy task for our country. It's taken, as I say, a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice. And so when you hear names like John Adams or Samuel Adams, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, Thomas Jefferson, and again, so many others, those names might remind you of documents like the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. For all the strength and patriotism that this country has and that this holiday invokes, I pray that those kinds of things you will take a little time in this weekend, perhaps you did yesterday and again today, and think about all of those things that make this country the great country that it is. Not a perfect country, but a great country. If you listen for a while, and I, I know that many of you have because you have shared this with me, in these last number of weeks. Listen to those who have been protesting, those that we have seen on TV. You'll hear the anger and disappointment in the voices of so many people. Citizen after citizen who is tired of being denied equal rights, tired of generations of injustices. If done peacefully protesting is a way for voices to be heard, our voices, any voice to be heard. I know that many of you, as well as family members, have served the armed forces in this country. Maybe you have family that are currently serving. I pray that God blesses those whom you know and whom you hold dear. May we give thanks on this weekend to those who have served. To those who are currently serving, may God protect each and every one and give an extra measure of strength to the loved ones, to the families from whom they are separated in these days. For those who have given their lives in service to this country, I pray that their sacrifices will never ever be forgotten. I was thinking about part of a quote this week and I, I couldn't remember where I had heard it so I googled it, I looked it up, and it actually is part of a quote from General Douglas MacArthur. And I'd like you to hear this. He said, duty, honor, country. Those three hallowed words reverently dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, and what you will be. These words for fellow military people, but words that have deep meaning, I think, still for us this day and in this season. I think on some level that we can all encompass these ideals as we serve God in all kinds of capacities. The history of this country reminds us that freedom, as the saying goes, is not free. It comes at a cost, doesn't it? It's the kind of gift that is hard won that we should be so very thankful for because we know that even on good days, sometimes the freedoms that we enjoy can be ignored, can be trampled and twisted to suit the purposes of individuals, even groups of people. And that for too many people, the phrase, all men are created equal, doesn't feel that it holds true. In the midst of our current pandemic, ugh, that horrible coronavirus has seemingly taken away freedoms that we previously had enjoyed so freely. 
We cannot come and go as we please. We can't congregate. We can't worship together just yet. We can't have family come and visit us. To travel across state lines means a couple of weeks of quarantine. And while the efforts of so many here at Westminster Woods have been such a blessing, the staff has been beyond awesome. They are not family. They are not our close friends. They are extended family, but not the same as family. And so we miss so much these days. Perhaps like me, you're noting that on this Independence Day, it feels a little bit less like freedom and thankfulness and more about things like isolation and loneliness and anxiety. Many of you have likened these days to being in prison. I get it. We need hope. We need some encouragement. Perhaps the timing is perfect then that we have these words from Scripture. And I want to focus on the end of the passage for today. That the word come, come to Jesus, to come, doesn't sound like in and of itself is a word that maybe carries much weight. And yet in this Scripture passage, it means a great deal. Come now not tomorrow or next week or when you get around to it but come now come to Jesus in the world of those who are biblical scholars and and pay attention to uh, the original texts and what the words mean this word come is called an imperative it's a demanding an action to happen right away and so when Matthew says come it is now to do so. In a world where there are so many distractions that keep us sometimes from focusing our attention on God, this one word can, can sh be shouted out above all of them. Jesus not only calls us to come, but to come with all of the baggage we are carrying around with us today. The baggage of things like hurt and loneliness of frustration and anxiety, all the negativity that we might be feeling, all the worries that come with it. So the question begs to be asked, of course, today, are what are your burdens? What is making you weary? I imagine I know at least some of what you would be saying if you were here with me today and, and I asked that question of you. There are health fears cancers and Alzheimer's, limbs that just don't want to cooperate anymore, eyes that don't see clearly any longer, and ears that strain to pick up the voices even of those who can come into our rooms and into our homes. The voices on the television set that no matter how loud we maybe move the volume up, it still remains a challenge to hear. Maybe some of the burdens have to do with the thoughts in our minds, thoughts that don't make sense sometimes, or things that we think we see that aren't really there, images that are hard to focus upon, lack of sleep. I hear that often. And there are things that we miss like laughter and humor seems to be in short supply these days grandchildren and great-grandchildren and their antics and we miss those encounters. Maybe miss hearing the words from someone that is dear to us as we are face to face. Something simple like, I love you. We miss those things, don't we? We miss so many things and other challenges like the day-to-day -day life issues worrying about our family and our friends and finances. Those days that sometimes seem to not have any end, they stretch so long before us. We seek to find anything that we can do to feel productive. And some days we just want to stay in bed. We don't want to get up. We don't want to get dressed. We just want to stay where we are 
and I understand. Worries and burdens about our country, all the things that we have lifted up this afternoon, all those concerns and, and more that you all have shared with me as we have had conversations. The unrest, the fear, the confusion. Every bit of this, every single worry, every single burden, every single question and not knowing and every negative emotion that you may have on this day that we've had this week that we may experience in the week ahead every single bit of it we can lay at Christ's feet all of it not only can we but we should as Christians lay these things at Christ's feet for if we ever find ourselves spending our days so focused on what I've just shared with you all, then we're truly denying ourselves the opportunity to give it all to God. To say, take this from me. I give it to you. Take it from me so I no longer have to worry about it. And help me figure out the things that I am so very concerned about. Giving it to God reminds me of a story that I want to share for the next few minutes. It's a great story. It's called The Wall, and it was written by Gloria J. Evans. It was given to me by a, a pastor friend several years back. And it's about this woman who was simply fed up with all of the worries and the fears and the unhappiness in her life. And so she began to build a wall around herself. A wall of heavy rock in block. She reasoned that if she took all of these rock blocks and built the wall high enough and sturdy enough that she could keep out all of the people and the situations that had previously brought her pain and could prevent future pain and unhappiness. For time she reveled in her isolation from the outside world and all of its ugliness. She rebuffed attempts by all passers-by to talk to her, including those who had in their time built their own walls of isolation, only to come to the realization that it was a futile endeavor and who tried to save her from suffering the same pain. As time went on, she realized that not only had she cut herself off from the ugliness of the world and the pain of the world, but also the beauty of the world. And it was on that same day that as she was missing the beauty of the world, she realized she had not been paying attention to God. She had cut herself off from God as well. So slowly she began to open herself up to God once again, to seek his wisdom and his guidance. And he was always, had always been, but most certainly in those days, as she came to know him once again, he was with her. He helped her to name all of the stones that she had used to build her wall. The stones of indifference, of shame, of pain, of anger, loneliness, self-pity, and anxiety, and so many others. And with God's help, she began to take her wall down block by block. It was hard. It was hard work because she had devoted much time and energy into building her wall. But as each of the blocks came down, her heart felt a little lighter. When she had setbacks and wanted to return her blocks to the wall, she would turn to God and he would gently but firmly encourage her and strengthen her. In time, her wall was no more and she felt so good about what she had accomplished that she became such a forceful presence and an overbearing presence in her world to share her discoveries about herself and her relationship with God that to those she talked to they only turned away and ignored her. She cried out to God in frustration and he had her look at the last stone 
and it was a beautiful stone. It was all bright and shiny. And as she gazed at it, she saw the reflection of her face in the stone, and she recognized pride. And pride was the one thing that was still keeping her from having a humble heart as she shared her discoveries with the world around her. So once again, she set out, and with that humble heart, God showed her the way and showed her to the people that he needed her to minister to. Her way occasionally in the story gets impeded by those pesky stones. Periodically she comes back to God and she sits with him and she talks with him and, and he encourages her to not stack those stones up again and rebuild the wall. They talk. And in those times she lets go of another stone or two. Rest in him, good people. Your souls will thrive. He is gentle and humble, and your burdens will be made light in him. Precious God, thank you for these reminders, this powerful story, as well as the scriptures this afternoon to come, come to him, and to let him know that the burdens that you have, you are willing to give to him so that your hearts and your souls will find rest, that you will discover that his yoke is light, as your burdens can also be. Amen. Our final hymn this afternoon <clears throat> is, I'll sing one verse of this one. And I know you all know this one. You don't even have to look at the words. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesty above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining I love those patriotic songs. I hope you do too. I hope you've been enjoying them and singing them this weekend, listening to them uh, as they have been uh, out and about um, on TV and, and on uh, Touchtown, the My W Life, uh, all of those places. I pray you have been taking advantage of those and that truly this weekend is, has been a time that has uplifted you. And so now let us close today with our benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and forever. Amen. Amen, good people. And until next time, peace.